Hello everyone, this is Snowblade from Tech, and today we are here with another main association of Math League's problem. Meet 1, 2011-2012, round 4, number theory, so new topic, now having to deal with the properties of numbers. Problem 3. Find the remainder when 23 to the 15th multiplied by 47 to the 17th is divided by 5. This is a very big number, and we need to find the remainder. There's two choices you have. Well, more than two choices. Many, much more than two choices. But two choices that come into mind. A. Guess. If you have no idea how to solve this problem, you have a 1 in 5 chance of getting this problem right. It's either a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. If you know some properties of numbers, you might be able to guess that it's not 0 because this is not divisible by 5. I'll get to that why in a second. So it's not divisible by 5, so you have a 1 in 4 chance. 1, 2, 3, 4. You can just guess, see if you get the right answer. But we're not going to guess because we know what we're doing. And we know modular arithmetic. Now, modular arithmetic is dealing with the remainders of numbers. So let's say 6 modulo 5. That is congruent to 1. In, in this video, we're just going to use the equal sign, but it's actually three lines, and it's a congruent sign. So yeah, right here, I'll put an annotation to a modular arithmetic tutorial on Khan Academy, and I'll also put a link in the description, and I really like this tutorial on modular arithmetic. So yeah, basically, this is just finding the remainders of numbers. So like 3 modulo 5, the remainder of that is 3, 5 modulo 5, the remainder of that is 0, on, on yeah, this is actually really helpful in cryptography and information theory. And it's also in group theory, because modulo is a group, which is very complicated, you don't need to know what that is. But basically, if you don't know the properties of the modulo operator and modulo arithmetic, then I have no idea how you're going to solve this problem. And the, the, they don't teach modulo arithmetic in school, which makes this even harder to do. So if you do know how to solve this problem, good job. You, you, Good job. But if you don't, that's okay, because they don't really teach you how to do this in school at all. Just like many other mammal problems. So, how do we find the remainder of this number divided by 5? So, first, it's not divisible by 5, because 23 is not divisible by 5, obviously, and 47 is not divisible by 5. So you have to realize that this is just a bunch of 23s and... 47s multiplied together. So since there's no d numbers divisible by 5 multiplied into that, you can't have any 5 times this number equals our our number right here, because there's no 5 in here. So we know the answer is not 0, because it's not divisible by 5. And if it was divisible by 5, then obviously the remainder would be 0. So it's not 0, we know that much. If it was 0, then we could just write down 0, which would make it very easy to solve. So the first thing you want to check is if it, it is divisible by the divisor, because if it is, then that'll make this much easier. But it's not. So now we need to find whether or not it's 1, 2, 3, or 4. So the way we do that is we use the following property. So when we have a product of two numbers, A and B, and we find the remainder of them, with a divisor C, that is the same as finding the following. The, the remainder of A divided by C times the remainder of B divided by C. This is kind of like a distribution of modulo C to A and B over multiplication. But And this can be really helpful because it really makes it easier to solve. So, yeah, we, we can just break it up into two modulo problems like this. So we'll do that here. 23 to the 15th times 47 to the 17th modulo 5 equals 23 to the 15th modulo 5 times 47 to the 17th modulo 5. So now we have two modulo problems, 23 to the 15th and 47 to the 17th. Those are both still very big numbers, but it, it, now, as you can see, we have them both in the form of 
A to the B modulo C. So uh, specifically modulo 5. So, so you see here, this is 47 to the 17th. That's just one exponentiation problem. And this is 23 to the 15th. That's just one exponentiation problem. So that's what we wanted to do to this. We wanted to get it into this form. Now you might ask, how do we solve a to the b modulo 5? Well, let's let's start with specifics. Let's start with 23 to the 15th modulo 5. Now remember that 23 to the 15th is just 23 times 23 times 23 times all the way through. So it's just 23 modulo 5 times 23 modulo 5 times, and we keep going, and this is 15 times, 15, not 25. So it's 23 modulo 5 to the power of 15. What's 23 modulo 5? Well, that's the remainder of 23 divided by 5, that's just 3. So it's 3 to the 15th. Now, 3 to the 15th is a very big number, which we are not going to calculate. But, and it's definitely not 1, 2, 3, or 4. So we need to take the remainder of this divided by 5. So, now we need to find the remainder of 3 to the 15th modulo 5. So how do we do that? Because that's 3 modulo 5 to the 15th, and that's... And saying that isn't going to help us, because that's just 3 to the 15th again. So, the way we do this is that we break it up into a product of powers. And the way we do that is that we get 15, which is our exponent, in binary. So it's 15 in binary. Um, it's 1, 1... No. Well, it's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Because... I just know that off the top of my head. I, you, you, uh, p different people have different ways of converting numbers to binary. You should have one way of converting numbers to binary because it's really helpful in mammal. So this is 1, 1, 1 in binary. But what we really need to know, this is the important part, it's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. So if you remember your exponent properties, you, you can remember that this can be broken up into 3 to the 88th. We can just use 3. That's one. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Wait, actually... So it's three. So three to the fifteenth is three to the eighth times three to the fourth times three squared times three to the one, which is just three, modulo five. The way we did, got that is because eight plus four plus two plus one is fifteen. So we can break it up into different powers. So like three to the fourth is three squared plus three squared because two plus two equals four. This we just just the same thing, but except it was eight plus four plus two plus one equals fifteen. So now, we need to figure out the modulo of 3 to the 8th, 3 to the 4th, 3 squared, and 3. So, like this. 3 modulo 5 times 3 squared modulo 5 times 3 to the 4th modulo 5 times 3 to the 8th modulo 5. Okay, like that. So we, we already know 3 modulo 5, that's just 3. What's 3 squared modulo 5? That's... 3 squared is 9, and 9 divided by 5, remainder is 4, and then 3 to the 4th, well, 3 to the 4th is too big for us to calculate. So, we'll just keep that, and we'll just keep that. So, now. Oh. Okay, so we... we uh, so, lots of typos here. So, we can just calculate now 3 to the 4th modulo 5 and 3 to the 8th modulo 5. The way we do that is that we break 3 to the 4th up into 3 squared and 3 squared. So, first, 3 to the 4th. So, we need to calculate 3 to the 4th modulo 5. We just break that up into 3 squared and 3 squared. Now, we already calculated that 3 squared modulo 5 was 4, so this is just 4 times 4. 4 times 4, modulo 5. 4 times 4 is just 16. 16 divided by 5, the remainder of that is 1. So now we know that this is 1. Okay, so now we remember that. And now, to calculate 3 to the 8th, we just break it up into 2 through to the 4th, because 4 plus 4 equals 8. So, 3 to the 4th, modulo 5, times 3 to the 4th. Modulo 5. Okay. So, 3 to the 4th modulo 5 is 1, so this is just 1 times 1. Modulo 5. 1 times 1 is 1. 
the way you may do of one one divided by five is one. This is also just one. So this is three times four times one times one modulo five, which is three times four well times one times one because zero of that because one times anything is the same thing. Three times four is twelve. The remainder of twelve um twelve when it's divided by five is two. So that's just two. So you see this? We just solved this problem. This is two. That's it. Now we just need to do the same thing with forty seven to the seventeenth. Okay. Okay. So Oh, first we need to break up seventeen into binary. So you might know your powers of two, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen plus one. That's it. So we just need to break this up into forty seven to the sixteenth. Uh, forty seven times forty seven to the sixteenth modulo five. Forty seven modulo five times forty seven to the sixteenth modulo five. Okay, so what's 47 divided by 5? The remainder of that. That's 2. So that's just 2. And we can also, remember how we replaced 23 here? We replaced it with 3 do when we were calculating the modulo, because 40, 23 divided by 5, modulo 5 is just 3. Well, we can do the same thing here. So instead of 47 to the 16th, we have just 2 to the 16th, modulo 5. Now, if you know your powers of 2 really well, we actually just calculated the 16th. So we'll just calculate our powers of 2. So, 2, 2, 2 squared is 4. So 2 to the 4th is 2 squared, squared is 16. 2 to the 8th is 2 to the 4th squared, which is... 256 and 2 to the 16th equals to the 8th squared which is okay so this is where we have to stop because the numbers get too big but basically we know 2 to the 8th is 256 so we can just calculate 2 to the 8th modulo 5 times 2 to the 8th modulo 5 the reason we can do that is because we know that 8 plus 8 equals 16, so we're breaking it up into two 8s. We're breaking 16 up into two 8s. So what's 2 to the 56 modulo 5? 256 modulo 5. That's congruent to 1. So this is just 1. 1 times 1 modulo 5. 1 times 1 is 1. The remainder of that divided by 5 is 1. So 2 to the 16th modulo 5 is 1. So now... 2 times 1, modulo 5. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 modulo 5 is 2. So that's that's also just 2. That, that's very straightforward. Just 2. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to figure out 2 times 2 modulo 5. What's 2 times 2? 4. What's 4 modulo 5? 4. That's it. So yeah, that was a pretty hard problem, especially because they don't teach you this in school. They, d they don't teach you that at all in school. Like, they teach you logarithm properties, but they don't teach you modulo properties. So I think it's kind of a shame, because I like modular arithmetic. So, yeah. I thought this was a fun problem. If you know modular arithmetic. If you don't, then it was probably very hard. Especially if you're confused by the binary part. If I took the time to really teach you how to do binary, I think this would be the wrong video for it, since it's modular arithmetic on top of binary. So, a very complicated problem. Don't feel bad. If you didn't get it. But if you did get it, really good job. Yeah. So the answer is 4. This is very, very, like, it's a very hard problem to do. It's But it's either 1, 2, 3, or 4. So you have, like, it's a multiple choice question. Except it's extremely hard. So it's an extremely hard multiple choice question. Even though it's not multiple choice, really, but, yeah. So yeah, I hope you had fun doing this problem, and have fun doing math.